to be in the house of the Lord. Because it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Some of you are saying, where's Pastor Dan? He dumped you. That's right. Him and his kids and his wife, Jessica, that's her just on the, on the screen. Along with my wife, they went up to help Luke up in Bend, Oregon, unpack. I said to Debbie, what the heck are you doing that for? He's 35 years old with two kids. I'm still his mother. So she left me with Dan and Jess's dogs too, my dog, you know. So here's what I'm doing this weekend. I'm picking up poop and preaching the gospel. Man alive, I'm telling you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. That means, <laughs> come on, wait a minute. Okay, let's try it like this. How many of you would love to have the best year 2019 you've ever had in your life? Okay, now wait a minute. What if I said most people come into the house of God and they expect God to do something for them and they are hoping, never go past hope, to have the best year of their life. Like, I'll take whatever comes. Has anybody ever been there? And it, you never know if it's gonna be good or if you never know it's gonna be bad, but I'll take whatever comes. Well, let me tell you something. That's like the stupidest thing you could ever do. Did you know that this, with God, you can plan and succeed. I don't want to just plan and not succeed. I want to plan and succeed that 2019 is the best year. Okay, now look. Before I get in even the message, just, just for fun. How many of you really seriously, by the raising of your hand, could say, I want 2019 to be the best year of my life? Oh, there's a few hands not going up. We'll cast the devil out of you later. And, uh, and because that's like, the devil has made you stupid. Let's, so let's, let's try this again. By the way, um, Pastor Dan, wonderful Pastor Dan, who's the best in the whole world, He'll be back next week and he's always kind, but me, I'm too old to care. I don't really give a flip, you know what I mean? I, I bought these pants in 1982 or something like that. And you notice how tight they are, that tells you how old I am. And one thing neat about being older is you don't spend any money on clothes. Like who's checking you out? Ain't nobody. So I don't care. So we're going to have a good time. But I promise you something today. Number one, you're not going to fall asleep. Because if you do, I'm running down, and I don't know if I can run or walk, but I will get down these stairs and come up there and slap your teeth right out of your mouth. And that's just, so no falling asleep. And number two, you're going to walk out of this place today saying, oh, my goodness, my brain just slapped by my tongue, and I woke up. And life is good. God has done something great. You're going to meet up with God today. Here's number three. I got a third one for you. I have not, and I don't like to ever go to church. I know this is the new thing. There are pastors all around the world say this now. This is, this is a new thing. I heard this. The pastors say, I want to talk to you today. I mean, some, listen, I can't criticize it. Some of them are the greatest pastors live on the planet. But I have to be honest with you how I feel. I don't know how you feel. I don't really give a flip what anybody has to say. I want to know what God has to say. So don't tell me what you want to talk about. I want to hear from God what God says. Is that all right? You know? And so I'm just going to get in your face today because you raised your hand and you said, I want the best year I could ever have in my life. Huh? And those of you that didn't raise your hand, you need to repent right now. And so God is going to be good. God's going to be great. Just a couple of, of, of heroes in my life, if I may share them with you. Bob and Marilyn, will you just stand up? These guys are on the road all the time as missionaries. Bob, where were you just now? In Bolivia. Where were you before that? Egypt. Egypt. Where were you before that? Slovenia. What? Slovenia. 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 You went to Slovenia? Isn't that next to Torrance? Then you found out Trump became president and she became first lady. They, oh, 
is that right? Oh, okay, sit down, Bob. And uh, so, <laughs> I'm telling you, these guys, I'm getting emails from them all the time. They are real heroes. If you see them, love them. Over on this side is a missionary, Dr. Barron. Where were you? Stand up. Where were you this last week? I called you, wanted to go have dinner, and you, you didn't answer. New York. Well, you were someplace besides New York. Where before New York? Samoa. Samoa. Is there a church in Samoa? Huge church. Huge church in Samoa. And in Mexico as well. And Mexico too, after that. He's all over the world. I call him up, he answers the phone. He's five in the morning. I'm like, so what? Let's go have coffee. He said, I'm not in the United States. I'm in Bukhijidibida. It's like, oh my goodness, as far as I go, it's Disneyland. That's it, man. I mean, I'm, I'm that. I'll pay you guys. You go. I'm staying in Disneyland. Anyway, I'm ready for the word of the Lord. Anybody ready to find out about how to have a, a great 2019? And I'm serious about this. I just want to share this with you. Uh, you know, I have been, this particular passage of scripture, when Pastor Dan asked me if I'd do the weekend, uh, I said yes, but instantaneously I knew what it was that God wanted to say to you. It's not that I haven't said it before. It's not that I haven't ministered it before. After 45 years of preaching the gospel, I have a few messages that I love, but this is one that God wants for you this day because 2019 is very, very important to you and you know it. And so it's very important that all of us understand where we're going and how this works and how to deal with things and God wants you to understand some principles. So we're gonna be going to the word of the Lord in just a few moments and, and I think you're gonna be excited about it. But here's the deal, you gotta listen and then you gotta make some notes and you gotta to listen to it over. I had a guy maybe 40 years ago said this to me. He says, you know that message you preach on the same subject, same verses that I'm gonna to minister to you. He said these words, he says, I probably listened to that message. <laughs> this is kind of funny, this tells you how old he is. On a CD, remember CDs? Uh, only the first two rows remember CDs. The rest of you don't know. Uh, this was on, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't a CD, it was a cassette tape. How many remember cassette tapes? Yeah, half of you, the other ones only remember CDs. And so I, 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 um, I told him, and what did you listen to? He says, I listened to it over and over and over and over until I finally got it where I could understand it. He says, and that has changed my whole life. I know him today as a very, very successful uh, businessman economically as well as spiritually. I know him today as a great father, great husband. I know him today as somebody who's made a mark on not only his family, but the people around him lived his life in an abundant way, so he was literally uh, a witness to the goodness of God all the days of his life. God wants to do that with you. You would have to be dumb as a sack of rocks to believe that God the Father doesn't wanna bless your life. Can you imagine a father saying, I don't give a flip about my kids, I hate them, I don't care if they're successful or not successful. Some of you have had parents that way and you've despised them for years. But here's a heavenly father that doesn't treat you that way. He wants to prosper you, wants to success, make you be successful. He wants you to have a great life. And so today we're gonna to learn how to start that in the year 2019, but you need to take some notes and get in and find out what God would have for you. So I wanna just share something before I even share the title of the message. I thought I'd just share this verse and then we're gonna jump off. This is a New Testament verse, if you will. And I just want you to watch, I'll put it up on the overhead, is that okay? And let's talk about it for just a moment. Here's Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit right in the church at Philippi. He writes these words, this is really God speaking. So if it's under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this is God speaking. And I don't know about you, but to me, God's not a liar. God's not a jokester when he says something, man, he means it. And so all of a sudden he says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So can I do all things through Christ if I don't let him strengthen me? No. Can I do all things if, he, if, he, if it's not in Christ? No. But listen to these words, all things are all things. So this back uh, little area back here may be having problems off and on. They have a, a deal going on, but we don't want that bother us. Here's what it is. I can do not some things. 
I can do not a few things, not a little bit. If it's the will of God for my life, and that's easy to find, because God wants to prosper you in every area of your life, then I can do all things, but I've got to be in Christ Jesus, and I have to be strengthened by him. And that's why you come to church, because every week you're going to get gassed up to get the job done that God has for you. Is that all right? So it's very important for us to see this. I want to take you, if I may, into the Old Testament now, in Joshua, the book of Joshua. And I want you just to turn to Joshua, the first chapter of Joshua. Now, let me tell you the story of Joshua, which is really fascinating. Joshua was the assistant to Moses. And when Moses died off, he never got into the promised land and Joshua has the assignment by God to take the people into the promised land. He's not just taking any people. That's the problem. We think he just took people. There was an entire generation before him that died off in the wilderness. Now watch this, let me back you up a little more. For 400 years, 400 years, the children of Israel were in captivity to the Egyptians. And then Moses, as you know, led them out of captivity to take them to their promised land. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, my goodness sakes, they saw more than you and I'll ever see. And while they're crossing over into the wilderness area, and God speaks to them about going into the promised land, they stop. And they say, no, we can't do it. There's too many problems, too many armies, too many people, too difficult for us, and they quit on God. Listen to what I'm gonna to say to you. The only way you could ever be defeated is if you quit on God. Are you following me? The only way is if you stop. If God get you to stop your own thing, you never end up doing anything or accomplishing anything. So now the new assignment, after 40 years, all those people died off. They, God had to wait for the entire generation of naysayers, of discouraged, frustrated, negative people that wouldn't believe God. Listen to this. Had to wait for them to die for the next generation to take into the promised land. And here we find Joshua taking the people into the promised land. They're ready to go. They're ready to follow. They're ready to believe God. And for some of us, we don't think that they had problems they had to face in order to get to the promised land. A promised land is a place of abundance a place of fulfillment, a place of excitement. A promised land in every one of our hearts is something that we're believing God for that we cannot do ourselves, but unless God gets involved with it, it won't happen. And God wants to take each one of you into your own personal promised land, at least started in the year 2019. What I mean by that is simply, some of you, your promised land is to have that marriage that really hasn't been going very good, but you want it to go great. Some of you really want to experience love between husband and wife or between the children. Some of you want to see your children grow to a mighty way and serve God in a mighty way. I, I'm so blessed because these verses came so alive inside of me that Deborah and I lived by them. And that's why all of our children are pastors preaching the gospel. That's why all of the children are serving God. That's why my grandchildren are now starting to preach the gospel. My goodness sakes alive, they're ordained ministers. Why? Because there was a promised land that we had ahead of us that we had to believe God for to get there. And it was so important for us. And in order for these people who are examples, let me say it again who are examples, one more time, 
who are examples in the scripture for you and I to see would show us how we also can obtain our own personal promised land. And we look at the scripture not to know a little Sunday school lesson. We look at the scripture so that we can learn how to do what God would have us to do. And listen to this, listen to this. Become what God would have us to become. Nothing more important than that. Live your whole life, be the most you know, economically successful uh, person in the world, have all the adulation of the world, have everybody knocking you on the doors. You're gonna be a, 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 just a big hero to everybody. Die, go to hell. And only the generations after you will spend your money and you won't even enjoy it. That's why there's so many people that have so much but yet don't enjoy it because they haven't got God. Now, stop right here. Let's talk. The problems that the children of Israel had was that they had the same problems as the generation before them. They had over 30 armies that had to be defeated for them to get to the promised land. Now, stop thinking about it. They are not professional soldiers. They haven't got lots of weapons made. Nobody's given them training. These are people that are wandering in a desert. They have nothing. And yet the same problems as the previous generation had, they had to also face. In those days, the one who won a battle was the one who had the most people. The one who had the most experience, mostly people, training. The one who had the most weaponry, had the best weapons. But the most important thing to win a battle was whoever had the most people. It was called numerical superiority. And they would bat, take, go to this battle. And here they were, people wandering in a wilderness. They had to go take their promised land. The same story with you. God brought you out of bondage, got you free, and now he wants to take you to your promised land. And the same thing that your forefathers before you that were Christians that had to deal with and had to face is the same thing you'll have to face. And that's why the word of God is yea and amen. It's as good today as it was then. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. And these people that were going to go into the promised land with Joshua had to learn two things. Simple things. These two things are really what it's all about. Number one, victory comes through faith in God. They had to learn that if they're going to be victorious, it wasn't going to be just because of power. It wasn't going to be because of their soldiering. It wasn't going to become because they had the strategic location. Can I tell you something? Most people that are Christians say, if I'm in the right timing, in the right place at the right time, I'll be successful. Can I tell you something? The right place at the right time is Jesus Christ. That's right. And when it becomes something else other than Jesus, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Is anybody listening to me? So they had to learn that victory comes, listen to this, through faith in God. The second thing they had to learn is that victory comes by obedience to his word. And his word isn't just something you read. Oftentimes you become familiar with God and God speaks to you about something and you don't do it or you do do it. If you do it, you're successful. If you don't do it, you fail. And it's so important for us to see these things. They did not come and they did not win these victories because they went through and defeated military might or numerical superiority. They did it with God. Now here's the problem and I want you to listen to me. Are, do I have your attention? Yeah. I want you to listen to me. Do I have your attention? Yeah. I want you to hear me because it's important that you get this. It's not God doing something for you and you do nothing. Nor is it you doing everything and God does nothing. It's you and God will always work together to accomplish that which needs to get done. If you've heard it a million times, you've heard it now. I put in the natural all that I possibly can. God puts in the super and we have now supernatural results. 
And if you want 2019 to be a supernatural year for you, you're going to have to put in the natural and believe God for the super and come up with a supernatural year. Without this, my friends, you're just playing church, calling yourself a Christian, wondering why others are blessed in every area of their life and you're not. And that's frustrating, isn't it? I hate that part. Joshua, first chapter. Long introduction, but I think you'll find it fascinating. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you line upon line, precept upon precept, word of God. I'll try to get through as many verses as I can to help you. In each one of these verses, there's principles that are being spoken that you must, I'm gonna say it again, you must live your life by. And you wanna live your life by this because God wants to see you happy and blessed. He's a good father Amen. that loves you so much. Amen. He's not wanting to hit you in the head with a two by four to make you do anything. He wants you to do what you do because you love him and he loves you. Amen. With that kind of a relationship, you can't fail. So it's important for us to see, if you will, in Joshua, the first chapter, verse number one, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord being Moses, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Stop. Oftentimes we'll read the Bible and never really figure out what's being said. The first one, Moses is dead, is because he's trying to point something out to you. The second one is that he's trying to point out something to you about what he said to Joshua. Moses is dead. Someone says, who cares? Any time in scripture that you find yourself, finding yourself reading something a couple of times in a row, two, three verses, and it says it two or three times, guess what happens, guys? God's trying to make a point. Yep. What could be the point that Moses is dead? The point is simply this. He's gone and there's a new future. And if you're gonna look back, you're never gonna go forward. Are you following me? You're no longer led there by Moses, you're now being led by God. And there's a big difference. And a lot of times we Christians live in our past. I'm an older person and I hang around a lot of older people and we sit down and we have coffee together or talk or have lunch or dinner together. And I find that most people that are older talk about their past. It's like the past, the past, the past. And I'm here thinking to myself, my goodness, I think the past is important and thank God for the past, but I'm not finished yet. I want you to know something. When you have God, let me say it one more time so you don't miss this. When you have God, one more time, because some of you just missed it, so I'm going to repeat myself again. I'm going to be irritating to you because I don't give a flip what you think about me. But listen to this. When you have God, can I tell you something? Things get better in the future than not worse from the past. And that's what he's trying to simply say to all of us today. Stop looking at the past. Look at Paul for an example. He says, man, I look forward to those things. The things in the past, okay, but I'm going on forward in those things. When I was a young man, we finished pastoring a church. We started in Lake Arrowhead. And it had 7,500 people called Lake Arrowhead Christian Fellowship. And we were just kids, Debbie and I. We didn't, we didn't know nothing about anybody or anything. And I'll never forget my son, Luke, who's going up to Bend to pastor now, is, um, was about, I would guess, five, maybe six years old. He pulls on my pants, probably the same pair. <laughs> <laughs> he, he pulls on my pants and he says, Dad, I'm mad at you. I said, why? He says, because I like this church and you're leaving. Aww. He says, when I get older, I'm coming back. I said, okay, and I moved on. I look back at it now, I never went back. You know why I never went back? Because the future with Christ is always better than the past. Come on, Moses is, listen to me. Some of you need to hear this. Moses is dead in your life and God wants to take you to a new level in the future. Come on, somebody. Now the, 
we, what we have here, he makes a statement in verse number two that's powerful. So let's just keep following. Now, therefore, because Moses is dead. That's what the word therefore is for, therefore. Because of what I just said, Moses is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go. Wait a minute. Arise and go. In other words, if you don't get off your butt, you're never going to get anything. That's a San Bernardino translation. And someone says, well, that offends me. Then stop watching television. Don't be a hypocrite. Is that okay? Here's the deal. Arise and go. And a lot of people want, but they don't want to get up and do anything. I want a better 2019. Well, then you're going to have to do something. Because it's you and God together. It's not you by yourself or God by himself. Arise and go. Powerful words. What if you never arose and never did anything? The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, says it like this. It said, what you sow, you... Well, wait a minute. Two people in the front row. <laughs> what you sow, you what? Reap. One more time. The word is reap. Means, you know, like you put in a seed, you reap a harvest, you get a harvest. So the words reap. So when I point at you like that, that everybody ought to say it because I want you to get this. What you sow, you reap. Okay, if it's true, then what you don't sow, you will reap you'll reap nothing. So arise, he says, and go. And then he says, over this Jordan. That's an obstacle, not a big one. God can handle it. That's what the Jordan represented. He says, you and all of this. I should have highlighted the word this because it didn't say, and all those. In the original text, it says this. This means God's looking at the people. He's observing them. Now, I could handle something from God that said, Jim, I want you to live by faith. I want you to be obedient. But when it comes to millions of people I'm responsible for, to get them to live by faith and be obedient, that's a bigger task than I'm able to do. And that's a bigger task than Joshua's able to do. So it's not about what you just do, it's bigger than that. God says something. And when God says something, all of these people, there's a million people gonna go over. You gotta get them in the right way. If you don't get them in the right way, they'll be in the wrong way and they'll be, end up like uh, the people before them dying off in the wilderness. That's a big call right there, you and all these people to the land in which I'm giving to them. I'm giving it to you. Did you know that God wants to give you something? But guess what? If you don't take it, you ain't got it. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor Jeff? Okay, let's think about it like this. I give you a million dollars. I'm putting it in a bank for you. It's secure. It's in the bank. It's yours. But I don't tell you what bank. I don't give you access codes. You don't know where. You spend the rest of your life going from bank to bank, say, that's my million, my million, my million. If you don't have the access code and arise and go get it, it ain't going to do you any good. So what God gives us a lot of times, we don't understand. We've got to be someone who takes it. Is anybody listening? Anybody listening? And a lot of people don't want that. They just want Tinkerbell to fly over them and sprinkle God dust all over them. And it doesn't work that way, my friends. So he says this, I'm giving these children of Israel, verse number three. Aren't we excited we got to verse three? (laughs) Verse number three comes along. Every place that your soul of your feet tread upon, I'll give it to you, as I said to Moses. Well, stop and think about what he just said. You say, what does that mean? That means everywhere you walk, you get it. So what is it God trying to do? Listen, God knows humanity. God knows that we need incentives. If we don't have an incentive, we stop in the trail. There used to hang a carrot out in front of that donkey. And that carrot, that donkey just kept going after that carrot. That's where that saying comes, put the carrot out. 
God knows humanity. Humanity will do the least it can possibly do. And instead of doing what it should be doing. And the carrot is out. And here's the carrot. Everywhere you walk, it's yours. Don't walk, you ain't got nothing. Arise and go. How about if anywhere, notice how he said the treads of your feet didn't just say where you walk. He, you could run wherever your foot landed. How many of you realize that if God said to you right now in this building, you go out of this building and wherever you get to with your feet, I'll give you the land. Some of you would run to Moreno Valley and start running around the block, the most expensive block. Some of you run down Waterman. Me, I'm smart. I'm running to Redlands <laughs> or the beach. Every, see what I'm saying? Wherever you're, that's an incentive. God says, wherever your souls feet. If you don't put your souls anywhere, you're not getting anywhere. And then I got to watch where I'm walking. Now, I like the next verse, verse number four comes along and he makes this statement. From the wilderness of Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hettites. Boy, that was a lot. Come on. He says this. And to the great sea towards the going down, going down, going down, going down, going down, going down, going down. Man, the sun, let me tell you something. The sun goes down a long ways away. It's all mine. Here's what God says. I'll give you more than you can handle more than you ever thought. Is that not scripture? Way beyond what you ever asked or think according to the New Testament. <laughs> What's God trying to say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't, listen to me, I can't do it on my own, but I can do it with him. Is anybody listening to me? On my own, I'm only gonna go so far, but with him, oh my goodness, to the going down of the sun. So you're going to tell me, now, let me ask, some of you say, well, that's just figuratively. Since when does God just speak figuratively? When God speaks, man, arise, Lazarus. It wasn't a suggestion. He got up and walked, man. Come on. Which takes us to verse number five, which is kind of a cool verse. Remember, these are all principles on how to believe God for victory and how to be obedient to God. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Stop, look back up at me. No man shall stand before you. A man standing before you means you're stopped. Just like that. No man will be able to. Didn't say no man won't try. <laughs> There's a big difference between somebody who is constantly coming against you, a thought or a person or someone trying to stop you, someone saying, no, you can't make it. No, I know people who tried. No, you're nothing but a fool. You're nothing but silly. You're not. He says, they won't be able to continue standing. Why? Watch this. As I was with Moses, here's the promise. I love this. This, this. this seal, this is the icing on the cake of the promise. I'll be with you. I'll not leave you. And I love this, not forsake you. Why did he say that? Because we feel like when we're believing something, we're all alone and God is not even hearing us and our prayers haven't gone as high as the roof and he's forsaken us because we don't see the answered prayers. And when I don't see the answered prayers, my mind and my mouth has got to go back to what he said. I'll not leave you, nor will I forsake you. And it's so important you can change the world around you with what's being said right here. Take you into the promised land. Who wants to, you want to hang around the wilderness forever? It's time to get into what God has for you. Believe me, he's a father that wants to bless you. I love this verse number six. Now he starts to give us the principles. Be strong and of good courage. Stop. In other words, here's what you have to do in order for you to believe God and all the pressure that comes against you to try to get you off of believing God. Try to stop you from believing God. 
try to stop you from being obedient to God's word. Because everything is going to try to stop you. If something doesn't stop you, you're going to be like Jesus walking around getting things done. But if something can stop you, you're dead in your tracks. And you're in the wilderness. And he says, this, be strong. And I love the word strong. It means taunt. It means tough, unbending, not going to give up, not going to quit. Don't care what anybody says. A strong man is standing in front of me. Don't care. Don't care what it is. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not backing down. I'm not going to go to the right nor the left. I'm not going to use excuses. I'm not going to live in stuff that's going to keep me from what God has for me. I know God has a, that's being strong. But I love the next one. And it says good courage. Now you got to get this. Courage without God is never good. It's just human effort. And eventually you will stop because Courage without God means you're just doing it yourself. You know, it won't be very long before you're worn down and give up. But God courage, which means simply this, there's none good but God. That my courage comes when I'm being strong and I'm being resisted and things aren't happening and my prayers feel like they're not going anywhere and I feel like he's not listening and I feel like he's not answering and it looks like everybody's coming against me. Every strong man in town is trying to stop me from what I'm believing God for. Then all of a sudden I take good courage because I courage myself in him. He is the author of my faith. If you don't do that, then you back off and stop and you end up doing nothing in your life. I'm a Christian. Broke down, busted and disgusted. When you could have had a promised land of blessings beyond your thinking. Can you imagine someone saying that to you? No, they just want to sprinkle water on you and throw smoke in your face. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you the truth. This is the word of God. I didn't write it. If I did write it, I'd charge the royalties and be a zillionaire. <laughs> I didn't write this. This is God, yeah. the inspired word of the Lord. Yeah. Be strong and of good courage. And then he comes along and he says, for to these people shall divide the inheritance of the land in which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Verse number seven, watch this. Oh, only be strong and of good. Two times. Only be strong, you're gonna to have to hang in there. Can't be moved. Not moving me, not moving me, not moving me. I made a promise, not gonna back off. I'm keeping it, God will bless me in it. And then he says, be of good courage. That, and I love these next words, that you may observe. Did you know you gotta see yourself doing stuff? If you don't observe whether you're doing what God would have you to do, sometimes you see only what you feel or what you think. But he says, now, I want you to see yourself doing it. Interesting word, that word observe. Let me give you an illustration of that. I've lost 20 pounds. The reason I've lost 20 pounds is because God and I had a tough time together. He called me some names that I didn't like. <laughs> and he's 100% right. Like hypocrite, liar. And he was right. He says, why don't you stop doing all those diets? And why don't you listen to me? If I can tell you what to say before tens of thousands of people over the years, you mean I can't tell you what to eat? And how to eat? And I realized, God... Yeah, I'm not doing that. And he said this to me. I don't want you to eat anything until you get permission from me to eat it. That's been two weeks now, and I've lost 20 pounds. I haven't had a moment of hunger. Not a moment. 
Every now and then I want to cheat. And I go open the refrigerator. Has anybody ever opened the refrigerator when you know there's nothing in the refrigerator, but you just keep opening it anyway? <laughs> Which tells me that I'm in a habit, like when I smoked. And he says, you just keep opening that. I said, but look, I found this little piece of cheese. He said, look at it. It's green. I said, but I could cut the green off. <laughs> true story, true story. I mean, no wonder Debbie's up there and I'm down here. I mean, she thinks I'm nuts. I, okay, I'll, I'll cut the green. Could I have this? He said, sure. Ate it. Oh, it's a wonderful piece of cheese. I, I'm, not color, I'm not sure what color it was originally, but it was, it was great. And my point being is this. He showed me what I was doing, opening the refrigerator. Look at yourself. What are you doing? See yourself doing something. Don't just do something and don't pay attention to it. Observe what it is you're doing. When I observe what it is I'm doing, all of a sudden I realize I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I see myself, I shouldn't be eating that. Is anybody listening? Very important for you to get that. Observe and do according to all the law. The law that, now here's where you guys get brain dead. Come on, I want you to think now. Don't get worn out. I'm doing all the work and I'm 700 years old. My goodness sakes alive. You're just sitting there going like this, okay? But at least give me the attention. My goodness sakes alive. Wait, the nap is this afternoon. Here's the deal. Watch it. Be strong, good courage, that you may observe and do according to all the law. The law is not talking about the Ten Commandments are just the Ten Commandments. He's talking about everything God says that's good for you. The Word of God. Do what God says. And I have to be filled with the things of the Lord. This is why we come to church to find out, learn about how to be, how do, now that I'm a Christian, how do I do this Christian stuff? No one ever teaches you to say, oh, you're saved. You don't have to do anything. The heck you don't. You're going to get beaten from pillar to post unless someone teaches you how to apply the Word of God in your life. So he comes along, observe, do the law of the Moses, sir, I command you. Do not turn to the right, do not turn to the left. Why do you say that? Because we have a tendency to be like water. Anytime there's pressure against us, man, we open the refrigerator and eat the cheese. You know what I'm talking about. That you may prosper, that you may prosper, that you may pro I didn't write this. Pretty cool though, isn't it? That you may prosper wherever you go. So where I go doesn't make any difference. I'm gonna prosper wherever it is. Why? Because my prosperity I take with me. What is that? A bank, bank account? No, it's God. Is anybody listening to me? Now watch this. Verse number eight comes along. We're going to finish up real quick. Is that okay? Can, I, can you give me a little bit more attention here for the last minute or two? Are you okay? Because right about here, you guys have a tough time. Watch this. Verse number eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but shall meditate on it day and night. What did he just say? Your mouth needs to be talking things of God, and your mind needs to be on things of God. Not on how much you are hungry, not on how much you are falling apart, not the things you need, not about how you feel, not about what life's going on, not about whether or not the Republicans are doing what they need to, or the Democrats are doing what they need to. I don't give a flip what Fox News says, CNN, you'd have to be an idiot to watch CNN. Anyway, I don't care, doesn't matter, because I'm not in it, I'm in the God. Come on, somebody. that the words are in my mind, they're in my mouth. What does that mean? When I'm under pressure, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I just spoke the word. When I don't think anything's responding or happening and I need to, I need to encourage myself, stir myself up in the ways of the Lord, I can do all things. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Huh? Listen, uh, I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, all kinds of scripture. You could just speak out of your mouth and have in your mind. That's what he's talking about. In order for you to be successful in 2019, you're going to have to start learning these principles. You say, well, how do I learn them? Come to church. Yeah. Not once a month. Yeah. 
I went to church last year. Good for you, you stupid person. You need to get the person, you need to get to church all the time. Somebody won't tell you anything, but I'll tell you the truth. You are stupid. All the little sissy pastors won't tell you that. But I'm telling you like it is. Pastor Dan will never ask me again. <laughs> that you may observe and do all that is written. For then God will make your way prosperous. Oh, shut up and read it. It doesn't say that. You just gave yourself away. Now you're getting real quiet on me. For then, for then means after you do what you're supposed to do, then God will make your way, right? Doesn't say that. Then <laughs> you, I don't want it to be me. I want it to be God. It is God in you, working through you, doing what you need to be done. But he's already there. Now you make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Okay, bottom line, let me finish this. Number one, thanks for putting up with me. I'm, I'm in your face, I'm all over the place. I don't give a flip, I don't care what people think. I just love you. I love you enough not to play with you and try to be some religious, spiritual person. I really, if I wanted to be religious and spiritual, I'd have the biggest collar you ever saw walking around kissing myself. <laughs> I'm wonderful. I much rather see your lives change and be prosperous in every area of your life. That's what this church is all about. It's real. It tells you how to live. Will you go out and do all those things immediately? Probably not. But if you just start today with a, I want to, and then maybe get the cassette tape. <laughs> the CD or listen to the downloads or whatever over and over learn something learn something about yourself save yourself from a lifetime of problems by doing what God would have you to do I love you 2019 my friends is up to you it's not up to God He's already gone to the cross for you. He already died for you. His blood has already been shed for you. And he sent back his manual on how to do life called the Bible. Now learn and do. And I can stand before you as a very old man. My wife's young and she's pushing 70. She's just a kid. And I stand before you telling you, this works. It just does. Because God, he is real. Amen. And if God spoke to you today, then give him a great big praise. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah.